Could the Memphis Grizzlies swoop in and be the mystery team that trades for Kevin Durant? That's what we're talking about on NBA Now. I'm your host, Jay Senior. I appreciate all of you for watching today's show. Up to this point, the Kevin Durant trade market, somewhat slow, somewhat stagnant, but things can pick up in a blink, and the Memphis Grizzlies have the assets to give up for a Kevin Durant trade to possibly appease the Brooklyn Nets if they want to rebuild that franchise and they can't convince KD to come back to Brooklyn. Now, we're talking about Durant going to the Grizzlies because of this trade idea that I saw on Twitter from ESPN NBA personality David Jacoby. On top of this trade, the Nets would also receive three first-round picks in addition to receiving Jaron Jackson Jr., Desmond Bain, and Danny Green, who's entering the final year of his $10 million contract and really is just included in this deal as a guide to meet salary expectations. And of course, the Memphis Grizzlies, the upstart Grind City Grizz, led by John Morant, one of the most prolific offensive playmakers in the NBA, would join forces alongside Kevin Durant. Now, the headliner in this deal would be Jaron Jackson Jr., and we'll talk about Desmond Bain as well. Why Jackson Jr. is one of the better young trade assets in the NBA is for these reasons. He's still only 22 years old. He's emerging and shown flashes of being a legitimate, dominant player. Consistency is something that I want to see him work on a little bit, but in the modern-day NBA, he can play forward. He can play center. He can give you that positional versatility. He can knock down the three. And throughout the playoffs, sometimes he's had really impressive performances shooting, scoring the basketball, but also rebounding the basketball. And it's a pretty athletic player who can protect the rim a little bit. Led the NBA in blocks last year. And he's also under team control, which is desirable for an acquiring team. Signed a four-year, $105 million extension in 2021 for the next couple of years. He's actually pretty affordable for what he gives you. Now, it's important to note that Jaron Jackson Jr. is recovering from a stress fracture in his foot from that timeline of when he underwent surgery back several weeks ago. He's going to be out over the next four to six months. But for Jaron Jackson Jr., you see the rise here. 2018-19, just shy of 14 points per game. The rebounding numbers, just okay, under five, but they've continued to get better as he's worked on the NBA prototype body. And the field goal percentage, year one, pretty good, but then you're looking at the block numbers. He's always been good on that end, and he's shown good instinctual instincts of shot blocking. One and a half blocks per game his rookie year, one and a half the season after that, one and a half, two years ago, and that went up to a career best 2.3, which did lead the NBA. Before we talk about Desmond Bain also being a potential asset in this Kevin Durant acquisition, I want to hear from you. You see the trade right here, in addition to those three first round picks. Who do you think wins it? Get into the comment section, sound off, and let me know. MEM for the Grind City Grizz, BKN for the Brooklyn Nets. I don't think that anybody should be sleeping on Desmond Bain. I know the homie Harrison Graham is not. He got to see Desmond Bain just ball out at TCU and saw the inner workings of him becoming a special player down the road. And I think that Desmond Bain has become a better player earlier than what a lot of people realized. He is a really good player and valuable asset in today's NBA as a guy who gives you size, who gives you one of the more prolific shooting percentages among all three-point shooters in the NBA, he can also defend. And you look at the jump in production from his rookie year coming out of TCU to last year. Doubled his points per game from 9 to 18, up in rebounds, up in assists. The field goal numbers, not concerned about it at all, but they've remained basically the same with more shot opportunities and more volume. Last year, 46% from three, nearly 44% from downtown as he was knocking them down from Beale Street at the FedEx Forum. And he was one of the best marksmen in the NBA last year, letting it fly from distance. Here are the top five three-point shooters last year in the NBA in terms of percentage. And you look at the three-point attempt there as well. Luke Kennard led the charge at nearly 45% on six three-point attempts per night. Desmond Bain just shy of 44% 
on nearly seven attempts per night. That is third highest on this list, just edged out by Patty Mills, who is 40% even. Kevin Love at just shy of 40%, 39.2 to be exact, and Zach Levine at almost 39%. So Desmond Bain, with the defense, with the three-point shooting, with the youth, the continued growth, he becomes a very, very attractive asset and a trade asset that could get a deal done with the Brooklyn Nets potentially. So you think about this deal. Who do you think is the better team for Durant services? Where do you think that he should play for the next couple of years? BKN for the Nets, MEM for the Grizz. Once again, I want to hear from you in the comment section. Now, we're live exclusively on Rumble. That's why you subscribe and follow us on the Rumble side of things because not only do we have nearly 4,000 followers, but sometimes you can find content on Rumble that's not on YouTube. And you see what we've been able to do under the chat sports umbrella, Warriors Today, NBA Now, Lakers Report, some of our staple NBA properties. Give us a follow so that you can stay in the know with all things happening on the NBA level. As for the latest on Kevin Durant, according to reports, Kevin Durant set to meet with Nets ownership this week as that trade request is still out there. And with owner Joe Tsai, they're set to have a conversation about a couple of things. Can they come to an agreement on the future path of the Nets organization? And what's the deal with Kyrie Irving? Does KD want to play with him? Does he not? Is the reason why he requested that trade because the Nets don't want to pay Kyrie Irving in the future? And if that's the case, could t KD persuade Nets ownership to give Kyrie a long-term deal? Because when they both came to Brooklyn, they did it under the thought that they'd be the one-two punch. More reports. Durant, Meeting with owner Joe Tsai, still unhappy about a couple of things, and it's unknown whether the issues get fixed or not. Now, do the Nets have leverage? That's where I want to pivot to next, because if you think about this, Durant is entering the first year of his max contract, and there's still four years remaining. And the Nets have built a really nice roster around Kevin Durant. If his goal is to win an NBA championship, I believe he can do it alongside Kyrie Irving if he's consistently available because of the construction of this roster here. And you have to give credit to Sean Marks. They haven't traded KD or Kyrie just yet. And they have kind of made some acquisitions that show that they might believe that KD and Kyrie can come back because why else re-sign Patty Mills? Why bring back Nicholas Claxton? Why make the trade for Royce O'Neal and sign TJ Warren, both of whom can be really good championship pieces and give this Nets team a lot better depth than what they had last year. Now, this starting lineup can certainly change. Kyrie Irving, Joe Harris, maybe Joe Harris is replaced by Seth Curry, but the bench and the starting lineup for Brooklyn is really good, especially if you get back Ben Simmons as well. And for KD, we know that he can still play. We know that he's one of the most special offensive players that we have legit ever seen in the history of the NBA because of the body type and just his overall offensive arsenal last year. Averaged nearly 30 points per game. The efficiency always crazy. Nearly 52% shooting from the field. 38% from three. Good rebounder. Good distributor. The only concern, the age of 34 and some of the injuries. But KD can still play and still can allow you to compete for an NBA championship. I do want to ask you this question before I hop on out of here. There are 30 teams in the NBA. If KD and Kyrie go back to the Nets, where do you think the Nets roster lies among all teams in the NBA? I want you to scale it for me from 1 to 30. And another reminder, follow us on Rumble, rumble.com slash NBA now. We go live exclusively on the Rumble app sometimes, and you don't want to miss it because we're pushing out content like this. Do appreciate the support in advance. And as always, thanks for watching the show.